Quick disclaimer, researching for this video nearly drove me to madness. If any terminology is off or outright wrong, it's because I barely understand what I'm looking at when I see a cladogram. If you've seen the 2020 PBS Eons video, Why Do Things Keep Evolving Into Crabs, you're probably intimately familiar with the phenomenon coined Karstenization, a trend in crustacean evolution where multiple species converge on the crab body plan. You're also probably familiar with the phrase Return to Crab, a joke spawned after this video and many resulting videos on the topic. The joke takes a concept behind the phenomenon and assumes that Karstenization could affect many more forms of life, even you and me. However, the phenomenon is really only relegated to decapods, and the extent of the phenomenon has been entirely overstated. But something far more extensive lies in the kingdom of life two doors down. Plants. Now, if you're like me and can't really grasp cladistics or taxonomy, even when it's with animals, and thus more familiar and a little easier, realizing the purely coincidental form that is the tree will come very, very late. The word used to describe the phenomenon of converging on a tree-like form is called arborescence. The extent of arborescence in the plant kingdom is far more all-encompassing than carcinization in the animal kingdom. You might be able to suspect that palms and pines are different from the stereotypical image of a deciduous broadleaf tree, but the rabbit hole goes much deeper, affecting many wildly unrelated groups of plants. Carcinization takes place entirely within the order Decapoda, again. Arborescence occurs within a phylum, Tracheophyta. If you don't understand how extensive that is, let me give you some perspective. The tiers of the tree of life go from large to smallest in this order. All life as we know it, domain, kingdom, phylum, Tracheophyta, class, order, Decapoda, family, genus, species. If we were to translate the extent of arborescence into the phylum that carcinization takes place within, carcinization would be present across all arthropods, so try to imagine a centipede or butterfly converging on a crab-like form. Let's go through some plant groups and talk about how unrelated each tree is. Tree ferns develop a woody upright stem that can resemble a miniature tree trunk. This stem serves as the main axis from which fronds or leaves emerge, growing upwards and branching out as they mature. Tree ferns are often found in subtropical or tropical regions where they thrive in the moist understory of rainforests where they can access ample moisture necessary for their growth. To me, they really resemble palms and cycads. Tree ferns, because of the name, are kind of a dead giveaway. They're in the family Cyathaceae, I don't know, and thus are related to ferns. Ancient lycophytes in the order Lepidodendrals once again, these names are very difficult, had tree-like forms growing hundreds of feet tall with scaly trunks, branches, root systems, and fern-like leaves. These trees were present in the Carboniferous period and persisted until the Permian, being eventually beat up by the previous mentioned tree ferns. Aborescent lycophytes were responsible for the large majority of plant biomass in the Carboniferous in their heyday, being responsible for 70% of all plant material in certain biomes. Lepidodendrals are most closely related to club mosses and coolworts than the stereotypical broadleaf tree, which speaks to how remarkable the ancient lycophytes would have been compared to their unassuming modern relatives. Conifers are probably the second most emblematic of a stereotypical tree that might come to mind. They are your Christmas trees and wreaths, however, they are wholly unrelated. Conifers are gymnosperms, which means they have seeds that are housed in cones and they do not reproduce with flowers, relying on pollen cones, which use the wind to spread their pollen. A juniper tree is more closely related to a Wilwichia, a very depressed looking desert plant, than something like an apple tree. If you look at the leaves of the ginkgo, they look like a traditional broadleaf tree, but are actually far more unique, being fan-shaped with veins radiating out of the leaf blade. This means they aren't monocots or dicots, and excludes them from being angiosperms. This means they are actually gymnosperms, with their closest relatives being cycads. Ginkgos used to be far more common in the Mesozoic, the age of dinosaurs. Nowadays, the only surviving species of the class Ginkgo opsida around today is the Ginkgo bilboa, growing naturally in China. Cycads are members of the ancient class Cycadopsida, first evolving sometime in the Carboniferous or Permian period. You might notice they look a lot like palm trees, and you may have thought they even were palm trees for a time. But no, cycads are gymnosperms, and thus are more closely related to ginkgos and pines than palms. To tell a difference, look at their reproductive structures. Gross sense. Cycads produce pollen cones like pines and palms, have flowers like all other angiosperms, so cycads are doubly convergent, converging on not only a tree-like form, but a palm tree-like form, although they did come first, so maybe palms are doubly convergent. Anyway, speaking of palms, palm trees are part of the order Arcals, and thus are classified as monocots. A monocot is an angiosperm that has a single leaf as an embryo, but if you don't have a microscope around, you can distinguish them by their scattered vascular bundles, fibrous roots, and leaves with parallel veins. Palms are more closely related to grasses, orchids, and bromeliads than other trees I've mentioned previously. 
Bamboo are in the order Poals, which means that they are actually grasses, not cousins of grasses like the palms. Bamboo grows incredibly fast, the fastest growing species. The Japanese giant timber bamboo can grow 47.6 inches or 156 centimeters in 24 hours. This means that they have a stored use in building structures like other trees. Magnolids, such as magnolia and avocado trees, are some of the most basal angiosperms, meaning that they have some features similar to gymnosperms like cone-like stamens. Magnolids include the previously mentioned magnolias and the avocado tree, but also include black pepper, which grows like a vine, and laurel, which is a bush. Superesterids are the biggest group of flowering plants and thus have a lot of diversity. The two orders within this superorder have species that converged on tree-like forms. The esterids and the santalols, I think. The sandalwood trees are santalols and are more closely related to the parasitic and epiphytic mistletoe than an ash tree, which is an asterid. Asterid trees like the ash tree are more closely related to potatoes, sunflowers, and honeysuckle than to sandalwood trees. These trees are not closely related to maple trees or ironwood trees, which are members of our next group, the superrosids. Superrosids are the second biggest group of flowering plants. Two orders within the superorder have species that converged on trees, the roses and the saxifrages. Ironwoods and sweet gum trees are saxifrages and are more closely related to black currants and bear paw than to something like an oak, which is an asterid. Some rosid trees are the maple tree and the wax myrtle. These trees are more closely related to legumes, grapes, and roses than to yellow poplar, which is the magnolid, or possumwood trees, which are asterids. So from our studies here today, I've learned that there is no such thing as a tree, as in there are no group of plants that can solely call themselves true trees. In my research, I've also learned that there's no such thing as a vine, nut, fruit, or vegetable. The plant kingdom is a nine-numbing swirl of mimicry and trickery. Thanks for watching the video. Uh, more on the way, hopefully sooner than, you know, this one, because uh, I do spend a lot of time procrastinating. I could make videos much faster. Um, I am running out of ideas, I think. Obviously, I have that alternate history video still. And um, I was thinking of maybe making a video on aliens and the whole alien fiasco that's been happening recently. Uh, considering how slow I make videos, though, that might not be topical in the month or two it might take to come out. So who knows? Uh, it could still happen. But uh, yeah, more to come in the future. Thank you for watching.